Hello guys, um, this is the self-efficacy screencast, probably the first screencast that you have experienced, um, and this is uh, basically a, a sort of new way of learning, the fact that we're going to give you a little bit more information to work on at home, and you bring it to the lesson, and we discuss a bit further so we can sort of deepen your learning. Okay, essentially this whole thing about self-efficacy um, runs along two lines um, essentially this guy Bandora decided that people have either what we call high self-efficacy which just means self-confidence good and um, above normal levels of self-confidence essentially and other individuals show low self-efficacy so they're not very confident athletes or performers or learners or whatever situation you find yourself in now what Bandura said was that individuals with high self-efficacy show certain characteristics and it's those characteristics you need to know for your forthcoming exam because you may get a question such as what is self-efficacy and explain the characteristics of high self efficacy style person or a low self efficacy style person so high self efficacy individuals show approach behavior now we've done approach behavior before so we should know a little bit about that already so they're, they're willing to give tasks a try um, if they show high levels of self confidence they also seek challenges so they're willing to push themselves a little bit further and they persevere with a task even if it's going wrong however those with low self-confidence or self-efficacy tend to avoid um, new challenges or, or new projects they give up very very easily they're, they've got a lot of experience of failure so therefore they don't want to they don't want to take on a new challenge they're frightened of, of becoming failures again and they, they give up easily on projects and they become very anxious with with set tasks so it could be quite a simple task but they'll become very anxious because there's a fear of failure still involved with them now Bandura also suggested that we can change someone's self-efficacy or their self-confidence by changing four different factors and again relating back to exams you might have a question such as this with the model in front of you and you will need to explain the four factors and how they work in terms of changing someone's self-confidence so here we go so Bandura suggested that we can change confidence through performance accomplishments now what that means is that we can remind individuals about what they've done before so they might be good at something um, in previous attempts and yet they're a little bit worried going into this new task well we can say to them okay well do you remember when you were pretty good at this blah 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 we can also change self-efficacy through vicarious experiences so this is where performers are, are usually quite apprehensive or they're quite worried they're trying to do a task and they can see other performers with them who are roughly the same ability level as them and they're gaining success and our performer is worried that that they might fail um, and not be as good as the people of the same ability so what we need to do here is we need to reduce their worry um, and often this is through use of demonstration we can change self-efficacy through verbal persuasion now this is pretty straightforward it just means we're giving them confidence um, through talking and we're telling them that they can they can achieve something you know well you know um, something as straightforward as it could be a bit of positive self-talk so in increasing their confidence levels to try something or, or a new activity and the last way that self-efficacy could be changed through Bandura's model is through the control of arousal now nervous performers will become anxious worried psychologically unfulfilled and essentially what happens is their heart rate increases they start to become a bit sweatier um, they can become quite uh, nervous in terms of their hands can start shaking or their 
the muscles can provide involuntary control and so we need to reduce that that level of nervousness by controlling the arousal levels good examples for each of these in terms of how to change the self-confidence through each of these four factors are as follows well basically performance accomplishments, accomplishments excuse me um, can remind them of previous success so through this we just remind them of what they've done before okay this is a new task you're you're shooting a, a ball into a netball post or a netball net and we can say to them well you've done this before you, you did pretty well at it can you remember this when and, and try again in vicarious experiences we can give them a demonstration and the advantage of a demonstration is we can slow things right down to the pace that we need of the learner so it could be that they're actually very nervous of producing a badminton shot because all their their friends who are the same ability levels are doing it really well but we can slow that demonstration right down um, it could be as simple as you know just practice the, the arm drive movement or the follow through movement or just practice it in the shadow itself as I said earlier on we can use positive self-talk to convince people through verbal persuasion so they can get we can get them to talk to themselves or we can talk to them as a performer and increase their confidence and to control arousal levels we can use somatic arousal techniques so things such as breathing deeply going back to positive self-talk is quite a good thing as well uh, we can use mental rehearsal to slow individuals thinking down those sort of things will control the physiological and the psychological arousal levels that's pretty much it folks um, what you need to think about is obviously try and recap this model you can go back to this video as much as you like and, and re go through what I've discussed make some notes but also you need to think about how this relates to increasing someone's ability to um, develop a balanced active healthy lifestyle how can we how can these four things and changing someone's confidence increase their ability to continue with exercise or change their diet or those sort of things that, that relate to balanced active healthy lifestyle any problems as usual come see me in the office but uh, otherwise enjoy and uh, repeat this again